Imagine a period when global conflict raged, with powers vying for dominance and riches tearing across continents like a tempest. At the center of this turmoil stood the British Empire, a formidable force during the 19th and early 20th centuries. In Europe's scramble for colonies and resources, Africa emerged as a coveted battleground, its untapped wealth drawing the attention of the British Empire driven by an insatiable hunger for power and riches. This pursuit of imperial dominance exacted a devastating toll, igniting wars and leaving behind a legacy of death and destruction etched into the memories of those who endured them. As we delve into these narratives, we confront the harsh reality, countless lives were sacrificed in the name of imperial expansion. Yet, the atrocities of the British Empire extended far beyond the battlefield. With the insidious spread of colonialism came the erosion of indigenous cultures and traditions, replacing them with foreign orders that sought to suppress African identity. The scars of cultural loss, often overlooked, serve as poignant reminders of colonial cruelty. This video serves as a call to uncover hidden truths, shedding light on the darkest corners of history. We reveal the lengths to which the British Empire went to maintain its grip on power, from deceit and betrayal to the deliberate exploitation of Africa's resources and people. Supporting our efforts by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel is deeply appreciated, as your support means the world to us. To truly grasp the scramble for Africa and the British Empire's pivotal role, we must journey back to the late 19th century. This era was marked by intense rivalries among European powers, each vying for global supremacy amid surging industrialization. Africa, with its abundant resources and uncharted territories, emerged as the ultimate prize. While several European nations had already established footholds along Africa's coasts, it was the British Empire, with its naval might and burgeoning industrial economy, that spearheaded the scramble. In 1884-1885, European powers convened in Berlin to carve up Africa among themselves, with no African leaders invited to the conference. The British Empire, led by Prime Minister Lord Salisbury, leveraged its diplomatic prowess to secure significant territories. This conference not only facilitated the imperial land grab but also established ground rules for colonialism in Africa. The British Empire swiftly expanded its African holdings through a combination of diplomacy, military force, and economic exploitation. Figures like Cecil Rhodes played pivotal roles, with ambitious endeavors such as the Cape to Cairo Railway, while strategic acquisitions in East Africa, like Kenya and Uganda, further solidified British control. Battles like the one at Omdurman in 1898 marked decisive victories, securing vital regions like Sudan. However, claiming territory and maintaining control proved challenging, particularly when faced with resistance from native populations. Despite its expansion, the British Empire faced ongoing challenges in upholding its dominion across Africa. During the colonial era in Africa, the British Empire encountered significant challenges and resistance from indigenous peoples and local rulers who opposed European colonization. This resistance often led to conflicts, leaving lasting scars on communities. In response to such resistance, the British Empire resorted to exercising its full power, resulting in war crimes that caused immense loss of life, destruction of tribes, traditions, and cities, and the brutal enslavement of indigenous Africans. These atrocities represent just a fraction of the colonial crimes committed by the British in forcibly colonized African countries. One of the most striking examples of British colonial crimes occurred during the Mau Mau Rebellion in Kenya, showcasing the depths to which colonial powers were willing to descend to maintain their dominion and exploit both people and resources. The rebellion was fueled by mass detentions, forced labor, torture, and the suppression of grassroots movements for independence. Initially, the term Mau Mau referred to the Kikuyu Central Association KCA, a nationalist organization that later became synonymous with the broader anti-colonial movement. The Mau Mau Rebellion was a response to British colonial rule in Kenya, which marginalized and oppressed the Kikuyu people, Kenya's largest ethnic group. British colonial policies, such as land dispossession and lack of support for returning soldiers from World War II, exacerbated grievances among the Kenyan population. The KCA advocated for land rights and political representation but was banned by the British in 1950, leading to radicalization among its members. The rebellion officially began in 1952 with attacks on European settlers, Kikuyu loyalists to the colonial government and infrastructure. The British portrayed the Mau Mau movement as a savage and irrational tribal cult, using ethnopsychiatric analysis to justify their harsh suppression tactics. British responses included mass arrests, forced resettlement, torture, and the establishment of detention camps where thousands were held under brutal conditions. 
The British colonial authorities employed severe methods to quell the rebellion, including beatings, sexual assault, mutilation, and denial of medical aid to detainees. The use of torture and coercion aimed to extract information and force prisoners to renounce their allegiance to the insurgency. Despite the propaganda efforts to isolate the Mau Mau from other Kenyan populations, the British response to the rebellion was marked by widespread human rights abuses and atrocities. Hussein Onyango Obama, the grandfather of former U.S. President Barack Obama, endured severe mistreatment during the colonial era. British soldiers subjected him to torture by inserting pins into his fingernails and buttocks and squeezing his private parts between metal rods. One of the most chilling episodes was the Ola Camp massacre in 1959 where detainees faced brutal treatment. The Ola camp was initially set up to house detainees considered hardcore and by January 1959 it held 506 detainees, with 127 in a secluded section. These detainees often resisted joining the colonial rehabilitation process or performing manual labor. In March 1959, the camp commandant ordered 88 detainees to work, resulting in 11 deaths from beatings by guards and 77 survivors sustained severe injuries. The British attempted to conceal these atrocities by changing the camp's name to Galal, but reports surfaced in the East African Standard, revealing the truth. An investigation revealed that the detainees died from violence, not contaminated water, as initially claimed. The British employed ethnopsychiatric analysis to portray the detainees as irrational, and a Time magazine report described the assault and deaths at Ola camp. Subsequent inquiries led to adverse publicity, calls for further investigations, and a reduction in UK support for Kenya's colonial administration. During the Mau Mau Rebellion, approximately 8,000 women were detained under emergency powers, mainly in community detention camps. However, archival evidence has revealed a second camp at Gedameo for hardcore female detainees. The British implemented scorched-earth policies in areas suspected of supporting the rebellion, resulting in destruction and forced relocation of inhabitants. The British killed, maimed, or tortured an estimated 90,000 Kenyans and detained 160,000. The negative publicity from these actions pressured the British Parliament to take action, leading to the closure of detention camps and Kenya's independence in 1963. However, many records related to the Mau Mau Rebellion were kept secret or destroyed, prompting accusations of a deliberate cover-up. In 2013, the UK government settled the Mau Mau case, offering compensation and expressing regret for the abuses. The Boer War, also known as the South African War, occurred between the British Empire and the Boer Republics from 1899 to 1902. The conflict arose from disputes over British influence in Southern Africa, fueled by the discovery of gold deposits in the Boer Republics. Despite initial Boer successes, the British adopted scorched-earth policies and counterinsurgency tactics, resulting in widespread destruction and suffering. During the Boer War, wire fences were erected, effectively dividing the occupied republics. British forces committed numerous war crimes, including the destruction of farms and the slaughter of livestock to deprive Boer guerrillas of vital resources. This scorched-earth policy extended to the systematic destruction of crops and the burning of homesteads and farms to prevent Boers from resupplying. Tens of thousands of women and children were forcibly relocated to concentration camps, marking the first instance of a whole nation being systematically targeted in this manner. While internment camps were not a new concept, the Spanish had used them in the Ten Years' War in Cuba, the Boer War concentration camp system was unprecedented in its scale and scope. A total of 45 tented camps were built for Boer internees, along with 64 for black Africans. From the outset, the camps were poorly administered and quickly became overcrowded. Conditions were deplorable, with neglect, poor hygiene, and inadequate sanitation contributing to rampant malnutrition and the spread of contagious diseases such as measles, typhoid, and dysentery, particularly affecting vulnerable children. Over 100,000 Boer civilians, mostly women and children, were forcibly relocated to these camps, where 26,000 died from various causes, primarily starvation and disease. Similarly, around 20,000 black Africans were interned, with many suffering the same fate as their Boer counterparts. After nearly three years of intense fighting, with heavy casualties on both sides, the British emerged victorious due to their superior resources and tactics. The Treaty of Fariniging, signed on May 31, 1902, recognized British sovereignty over the Boer republics while granting significant political and civil rights to the Boers. However, the Boer War left a lasting legacy in South Africa, contributing to the country's unification in 1910 under the Union of South Africa. 
Despite this, deep scars remained, fueling bitterness and division between English-speaking and Afrikaans-speaking South Africans for generations. Historians and scholars have attempted to deflect blame from the British regarding the establishment and treatment of the camps, initially portraying them as places of refuge for affected Boer civilians. However, as reports of high mortality rates and harsh conditions surfaced, public outrage and international scrutiny grew. While the British government launched investigations and made efforts to improve conditions, many argue that these actions were insufficient, given the substantial suffering endured by camp inhabitants. Ultimately, the British efforts led to the significant suffering and deaths of women, children, and others in the camps, underscoring the darker aspects of British colonial history. Concentration camps during the Second Boer War, regardless of the intentions behind the establishment of these camps, the harsh living conditions, inadequate medical care, and limited sources contributed to a high mortality rate among the camp inhabitants. The British Empire, at the zenith of its global influence, held sway over vast territories and diverse populations across the world. While the British Empire is often celebrated for its contributions to science, culture, and governance, it is also a historical fact that its colonial rule was marked by a range of actions and policies that today are viewed as deeply troubling the concentration camps during the Second Boer War with their high mortality rates are just one example of the contentious aspects of British colonial history. While the British Empire played a pivotal role in shaping the modern world, its legacy is marked by a dark history of exploitation, violence, and oppression in various parts of the world. Other well-known instances of British colonial crimes include the Malayan Emergency. The Malayan Emergency was a guerrilla war between British armed forces and the Malayan National Liberation Army Mona the military wing of the Malayan Communist Party which began four years before Queen Elizabeth's reign and continued eight years after she ascended to the throne the Mla sought independence from the British colonial government and began waging guerrilla attacks on rubber plantations police stations and transportation and infrastructure networks on June 18, 1948 in response to these attacks British authorities declared a state of emergency triggering a 12-year-long war and scorched earth terror campaign in which the British military set fire to homes and farmland belonging to those suspected of having ties to the Mnoir relocated an estimated 400,000 die to 1 million people into concentration camps called New Villages and sprayed crops with Agent Orange to starve insurgents the emergency was declared over in 1960 and by that time an estimated 6,700 guerrilla fighters and over 3,000 civilians had lost their lives. Military strategists and policymakers still study the Malayan emergency today as one of the few successful counterinsurgency campaigns undertaken by the West during the Bengal Famine of 1943. The Bengal Famine of 1943 is a stark example of the devastating consequences of British colonial policies during World War II. It is indeed a tragic chapter in the history of British colonial rule in India, marked by policies that prioritize the needs of the British Empire over those of the Indian population. Several factors converge to create the perfect storm for the Bengal famine. First, British policies in India had resulted in the exploitation and impoverishment of the Indian population for centuries. The British imposed a system of land taxation that often left Indian farmers with very little to subsist on. Additionally, the policies of the British colonial administration had disrupted traditional food distribution systems, making the population vulnerable to food shortages during World War II. The demands of the British war effort led to further economic exploitation of India. British authorities requisitioned rice and other essential foodstuffs from India to feed British troops and the civilian population in Britain and the Mediterranean. This extraction of vital food resources from Bengal, a region heavily dependent on rice cultivation, exacerbated the food shortage. Winston Churchill's role in the Bengal famine has been a subject of controversy and criticism. His decision to prioritize the allocation of Indian-grown food to support British troops abroad, even in the face of a severe food shortage in Bengal, has been widely criticized as callous and indifferent to the suffering of the local population when hearing about the famine. Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of the UK, is said to have remarked that the famine was their own fault for breeding rabbits. The comment attributed to Churchill is emblematic of a broader British colonial attitude of racial superiority and indifference to the well-being of colonized peoples. Such remarks, if accurate, reveal a deep-seated prejudice that influenced decision-making during this critical period. As a result of these policies and actions, an estimated 3 million Bengalis perished during the Bengal Famine of 1943, making it one of the most devastating famines in modern history. The historical record paints a stark and unsettling picture of the British Empire's legacy in the countries it colonized, particularly in Africa. 
It is a legacy stained with the blood of countless individuals who suffered under the weight of exploitation, oppression, and brutality. While today's Britain often proudly touts its commitment to peace and progress, it is essential to remember the darker chapters of its history. The stories of those who endured the British Empire's rule must not be forgotten. These narratives remind us that even nations that profess to stand for justice and equality may carry the heavy burden of a colonial past. Acknowledging this past and its implications is a crucial step towards building a more equitable and just world. By shedding light on the injustices perpetrated by the British Empire, we not only honor the memory of those who suffered but also underscore the importance of accountability and reconciliation in our shared human history. It is only by recognizing the stains on our hands, both individually and collectively, that we can work towards a future where the lessons of the past guide us toward a more inclusive and compassionate world. This brings us to the end of this video. Tell us what you think in the comment section as we are always interested in your thoughts. Don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to our channel and share our videos to let more people know the truth about blacks and hear their own part of the narratives. Thanks for watching Foreign.